don't forget to wear gloves if you don't want a whole bunch of paint on your hands. Today I want to start with laying down the base. And as I talk you through this, I thought it could be a good time to share some mom motivation and even maybe my birth story. First off, I just want to start out by saying that motherhood is a very, very big decision. Your entire life does change. And when I was an expectant mother, when I had just found out that I was pregnant, I was terrified. I felt like I didn't even know how to take care of myself, so how was I going to take care of another human being? If you are an expectant mother, I just want to let you know that there is nothing to be afraid of. All of these what ifs that are going on in your mind, it's just that. Children bring the most abundant amount of joy and light into your life. Personally, it put my entire life into perspective. Now I have different priorities than I did before and I've become so much more responsible, diligent, reliable, consistent. And the list just keeps going on and on. When I had my daughter, I realized that I want her to see that she can do anything that she sets her mind to with hard work and perseverance. And I wanted her to see that firsthand. If her mom can show her that she can do it, then she will know inherently that she can also do it. That's actually why I started this YouTube, so that she can see that she can accomplish anything that she sets her mind to. And when it comes to labor, a lot of people have horror stories and they'll try to scare you about it. Like I had an at-home water birth and it was the most magical experience of my life. A lot of people have horror stories and they'll try to scare you with them, but rest assured that nothing else will matter when you hold your baby in your arms for the first time. When you birth at home, it's without any epidural or anything for the pain and it was bearable. It definitely hurts and it's a lot of work, but it's, it's an incredible experience. I actually have a pretty crazy birth story. I think I'll tell it to you now. I had my daughter in April, which was during the first peak of the pandemic. She was born on the 23rd and I think the peak happened the 21st. So for me, the most important thing was to avoid hospitals at all cost. From the beginning, I chose to have my birth at a birthing center. In general, hospitals always kind of freaked me out. My mom was an OBGYN and growing up, I just spent way too much time waiting for her in hospitals. And she really respected that I wanted to have a natural birth instead of one in a hospital. Unfortunately though, she had gone to Haiti because she was teaching ultrasound out there to the doctors. And there were talks about there being a shutdown. So I quickly called my mother and told her that she needed to get back as quickly as possible. And uh, she was actually able to rearrange her trip and book a quick trip home right before travel was banned. April soon approached and life brought me another very large struggle. The midwife I had been seeing since I was three months pregnant quit on me two weeks before my due date. She called me frantically after one of my doctor's appointments and said that she was going to consider me high risk and she would no longer work with me. She said that she was going to transfer me to the emergency doctor on call at the hospital for a possible induction. Mind you that this was the first peak of the pandemic where going to the hospital would be putting everyone at risk and my mother would not be allowed to be there for my birth. I was completely taken by surprise. I had never heard of this type of thing happening in my life. I felt though I had been running a race and my legs gave out right as I was reaching the finish line. But in this case, the rug had been pulled out from under me. I was so, so lucky to have my mom here. 
because of all of her experience being an OBGYN, I was reassured that there was no reason to go to the hospital and the best thing to do was to wait it out a little bit longer until the baby came naturally. We were able to get the report sent over from the midwife uh, of what my last NST was. The midwife got freaked out because the baby was stated to be IUGR in the ninth percentile. So the baby was supposed to be, or supposedly small. Aside from having genetically small babies in my family, the midwife also misread the report and confused the cerebral artery Doppler with that of the heart Doppler, which were both actually perfectly healthy. I remember I was laying in bed when I got the call and I ended up having a panic attack because it seemed that everything I had planned for was just going to crumble right at the end. Luckily though, my mom had a portable ultrasound machine, um, which is what she uses to teach over in Haiti and in uh, third world countries. And we were already monitoring the baby every single day. So she reassured me and told me that the baby was perfectly healthy and the best thing to do would be uh, to leave her in the oven to bake a little bit longer. My fiance and I had also been taking this nine week course with this phenomenal teacher who I feel prepared me super, super well for all of my options and uh, just the birthing process in general. And with her guidance, I asked for recommendations of new midwives and she gave me a list of three that she recommended and I called them all. Uh, two of them weren't able to do it and the one that answered was absolute fate. She told me that if I was able to get a second opinion, she would be able to attend my delivery. So that same week, we went to a pretty well-known doctor in Calabasas to get this second opinion. And uh, they gave me the green light to have an at-home birth. Both of my new midwives were supposed to go out of town for family births, but the pandemic had actually uh, canceled both of their trips. So they were both able to attend my delivery on such short notice, which was incredible. I met with them at my house once before the big debut. There was something really crazy that happened too. The day before Anaya was born, there were two large peacocks sitting in our front lawn. We have never seen peacocks in our neighborhood before then or since then. It was such a rare occurrence that I thought, wow, this definitely means something. I looked it up online and it was a sign of protection. So everything that I had been going through, I just knew that things were going to be okay. I had one night of really consistent contractions, uh, but then I was able to go to sleep and uh, they kind of went away overnight. And then they started up again in the morning, all through the day and through the night. And I remember my fiance was uh, tracking the space in between my contractions. And he said that I was dead asleep but every 10 minutes I would not even wake up. I would just start whimpering. I woke up at 2 a.m. and I told him to go to bed. <laughs> and that's when it really started. I labored on my couch, holding onto it for a while until the contractions got really strong and I was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be alone. So I woke my mother up and uh, she and I called the midwives together. They rushed over and we started filling the pool up. And uh, after a while of laboring on the bed, my water broke and that's where we transitioned into the pool. Now the water was super warm and nice and it, it definitely relaxed me. From there, I would be able to see my baby girl in about 30 minutes. And it was an excruciating 30 minutes. It was a lot of pain, it was a lot of work. And I remember uh, when they told me 
that they could see the head. I was already kind of picturing the head all the way out. Uh, and then they told me, you know, it was gonna be another 10 minutes. And I was like, no, it can't be. This needs to be done. <laughs> I think when you're going through labor, uh, <laughs> you start sounding like a wild animal. Like these noises that come out of you, <laughs> you're like not in control of it anymore. It's primal. And right as you start to completely overheat and get super, super tired and overwhelmed, the moment you say, I can't do this anymore, because there will always come that time, that's when it happens. That's when you get to meet this miracle that you created from nothing. It will definitely be the most exciting moment of your life. And from then on, your life is going to expand. Your capacity is going to expand and you will become the best version of yourself. At least that's how it happened in my life. And it really brought me and her father together a lot more. So whatever you're afraid of, let it go. Let life happen because it's happening for a reason. This is the final result of this painting. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope that this little talk has been enlightening. Oh, and one more thing. This piece was sold and this is what it looks like hung up on my friend's wall. How beautiful! If you like this video and would like to support this page, like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Awesome! Have a great day!